I'm Ryan. I'm Judd. And this is the first episode of our new series called Part Time, where we uh, just sit back and we review movies. So our first episode of Part Time, we are going to be reviewing this gem, <laughs> Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li. Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li tells the epic harrowing tale about a young girl named Chun-Li. When she was very young, her father gets kidnapped by M. Bison and a group of his thugs. He gets kidnapped to perform some duty that is relatively unknown to the audience, and apparently it's helping M. Bison in his master scheme at uh, obtaining a bunch of land. Chun-Li eventually grows up to become a pianist and loses some of her Asian traits, and apparently grows up in the lap of luxury. Uh, upon reaching adulthood, or young adulthood, her mother dies of cancer, and um, Chun-Li finds it in herself to seek out her father. Only this means she has to go homeless for a little bit and find some guy for mortal combat named Gen. Gen eventually teaches her how to summon fireballs and write yin-yangs in the sand, only to have her infiltrate M. Bison's secret hideout to recover her father. Unfortunately, this reunion is short-lived as M. Bison snaps her father's neck right in front of her. Filled with rage, Chun-Li eventually goes back to M. Bison's hideout with the help of her friends Charlie Nash and that girl from Terminator Salvation, and she eventually kicks M. Bison's head off like a Pez dispenser. Thwarting all evil and bringing down a huge crime syndicate, Chun-Li eventually goes off to train and lives happily ever after. Now, of course, Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li is based on the Street Fighter games by Capcom. Uh, loosely, by the way. <laughs> loosely based on the Street Fighter games by Capcom. This uh, movie in particular focuses on the character of Chun-Li. There are several characters that appear in this movie that do appear in the fighting games, and I'd like to talk a little bit about them now and the differences in their appearances, mainly between this movie and how they appear in their games. Now, you'll be able to tell from each of these pictures what the differences are between these characters, how they appear in the games, and how they appear in the movie. And this movie does take place before the first Street Fighter tournament, so they didn't necessarily have to be dressed the way they are in the games, but there are still some differences in the way they appear um, that are not affected by their costumes. Kristen Kruick plays Chun-Li in this movie. Uh, I have, this picture of Chun-Li is not how most people recognize her costume. This is her costume from Street Fighter Alpha when she's younger. Kevin Klein plays Charlie Nash. Instead of being uh, military in this movie, he's a member of Interpol. Neil McDonough uh, plays Bison, and his M. Bison is very different in appearance, as you can see here. Robin Sho plays Gin. Uh, this is definitely a case where Gin could have been dressed in something very similar to how he appeared in the games, and they could have uh, made him appear even older. Taboo plays Vega. And they went with a metal mask and a, instead of the white traditional look for Vega. Michael Clark Duncan played Balrog. This casting is a choice that I think was, was good, but they could have uh, given him the Balrog hair and maybe put boxing gloves on him at some point. And next up we have Eliza Vida Kiryukina as Rose. And as you can see, her appearance is different. Uh, in this film uh, from how she appears in the games and in this film she is the daughter of M. Bison. 
which I don't believe is exactly how their storylines uh, interact in the games. And then last, we have Moon Bloodgood as Detective Maya Suni. Uh, I did not realize this when we recorded the actual review, but that is the name for Sea Viper. So it is also a character from the games. Uh, sea Viper first appeared in Street Fighter IV, which I think was just a year before this movie uh, came out. And that is the last of the uh, character comparisons from movie to game. So now that we've talked about some of the characters and their appearances and their differences, uh, uh, vast as they may be, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, uh, I guess we should probably let's jump right into it. Uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that we just didn't like about the movie. I mean, th there's a lot to talk about, but like, what 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 makes it a bad movie? For well, me, I, mean, I say a bad movie. I mean, <laughs> kind of putting the cart before a horse here, but uh, yeah, like, what do, what do we not like about the movie? Personally, for me, it's an adaptation in a way of characters and from from a beloved fighting game, and I have a very personal connection to fighting games. I, I mean, I play a lot of fighting games, so I want it to be good. I want it to follow storyline faithfully, if it, if possible which in video game movies doesn't really happen. That's true. Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, there's a, a good story that could have been made here, but it, it was not... It wasn't done as well as it could have been, and really I find myself when I watch this movie... I, it, I guess boring is a good word to describe it. A lot of times I feel bored during this movie. Yeah, that, that's what I got a lot, like... There's a lot of things that this movie does that I've seen other movies do worse, but I've seen so many movies do better, you know? Like, uh, really just the overview of the plot. I mean, the, the plot in and of itself, to me, is not a bad plot. It's just poorly implemented because it's, it's very cookie-cutter. You know, they, it's a, an essentially a revenge tale. Or, you know, she her dad gets kidnapped, and she's trying to find him, and then he gets killed. Spoilers! Uh, <laughs> there will always be spoilers during part time. Always. These movies will always be movies that have been out on DVD. Um, some of them will be older, but these are not brand new movies, so, yeah, so expect spoilers. Yeah, expect spoilers. Uh, but... Uh, but yeah, like her her dad gets killed, then she she tries to avenge his death. So I mean, like the the plot itself is a very old time tested plot, and it's not necessarily bad to be cookie cutter. It's just there's so many instances where that plot's implemented better. Well, it really it really changes though because at first her father's kidnapped. Yeah, and it does he's not her. actually killed yet. Yeah, so it's not really a revenge movie yet. It doesn't turn into a revenge movie until they kill him right in front of her. Yeah, yeah, that's that and is they true. They have her captured. They don't kill her for some reason. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, it. Like everything was just like you said, kind of boring and drab. Um, the the fighting sequences. You would think that in a fighting movie named Street Fighter, the fighting sequences are going to be great. That's not necessarily the truth. I, I would, would you call them competent? I think um, some of the fighting scenes are, are fine. Um, some are just so, like, they, they get wire working with some of them. And that's true, it's that's, that's like, bad. Some of them are passable, some of them are kind of borderline. There's a really bad one in this movie when... Chun Li's being chased, I think, by Balrog across the roofs, or is that Vega chasing her? I think it's Vega. Vega's chasing her. Vega's chasing her. And instead of she's jumping to another roof, and it would make a lot more sense. It would have made sense for her if well, she didn't have to do a flip, but if she <laughs> does have to flip, it, it would be a flip forward would be good for the momentum she was going at. But instead, she flips backwards while like, she's trying like to go a gainer, to, like a know, gainer trying I mean, to get to another roof, and it. Makes no sense, uh, yeah. except for they have that wire work they can use. So, yeah, I, I think the 
part, the, like, the, the fight scene that, that just made me facepalm was in the beginning when the bad guys came in to apprehend and kidnap Chun Li's father. He's fighting some guy. I don't even know who he's fighting. He sets his arm on fire. Oh, yeah. He, he lights his hand on fire. He lights and, his hand and, on fire. And, and punches this guy. And, and he gets like, the chain on fire, too. Yeah, he gets the chain on fire. And he, he wraps this guy like Simon Belmont style or something and pulls him close and then grabs him and sets him on fire and like then shakes it off his, shakes it out. I'm like, really? That, that was uh, nonsensical. And did it. Like when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh. I don't even know how to respond to that. And... I, and I don't know. Like, like I said, the, the, the fighting sequences were just sort of... They were there. I've seen worse. I've seen much better. Uh, but you would think you would think with a name like Street Fighter, they would at least get that right. <laughs> like a, a fighting sequence. You know? When, the, when the, mov- the movie... I never saw this in theaters. I never saw this till later when it was out on DVD. But... I know when they cast Kristen Kruick as Chun Li, she was at least half Chinese. But I was real. I would really hope that they would go further and go all the way and you know cast a full Chinese actress. And uh, not that I have any hatred for Kristen Kruick, um, <laughs> but it. I think it could have been more faithful in that regard. Yeah. Uh, but when I knew that, I didn't expect much from this movie when, you know, some of the casting choices they made ahead of time that I knew about before this even came out in theaters. So the fights, I didn't expect them to really be any better yeah. than they were. I, I will say some casting choices could have worked. Yeah, they um, could have. Michael Clark Duncan, he didn't look anything like M. Bison, but the, M. Bison, not, not Bison. Like Balrog. Balrog. <laughs> uh, uh, he really didn't look anything like him, Bison, but <laughs> but, uh, but uh, Michael Clark Duncan he plays Balrog, and to be fair, Balrog in the game he's a big black guy, and Michael Clark Duncan is a big black guy. But like they could have at least done his hair right. I mean, he could have worked. Yeah. And Michael Clark Duncan is a very good actor, or he was, you know. Um, could have had at least one scene. That we had him hit a punching bag. But we could have had a scene with him boxing, actually, with boxing gloves yeah, on. Yeah, I point. mean, he could, like I said, he could have worked. Um, the guy who they got to play in Bison, he's a, a great actor, but they could have at least dressed him more believable. Like they could have dyed his hair brown. Well, I, I don't even. I think they bleached his hair blonde for this movie. I don't. What color hair does he have naturally? I think I've seen him in some other stuff, and he's he's he has blonde hair. But like they could have really? at least okay, I, they could have at least made his that's a, a simple dye job. You know, go get some just for men, and your problems are solved. And he had these like ocean blue eyes, and I'm like, I don't know what. I'm pretty sure M. Bison's eyes aren't blue. Um, I would have to check. But I even really still, tell you off the top of my head. I do know one thing about the game is uh, I've never seen M. Bison in a business suit and concerned with real estate. And that's another thing. Yes, kind there of, is a real estate that, plot. That, there's a real estate plot in this thing, and that's the grand scheme of M. Bison's like. He wants to throw world. all the people out of the slum, the, all these poor people out of the slums, and he wants to destroy their houses, and he wants to build nice houses so that. Uh, wealthy people can come move in on this waterfront property. Yeah. And which by the way this waterfront is like a river that runs through downtown Bangkok and it is like polluted brown. I don't know who would want waterfront property on that, but that's beside the point. But like that plot device is like really you're going to go there. I'm like they did it in Superman back in the 70s and I didn't I, it wasn't the same thing, but it was like a real estate real estate, real estate ploy yeah. like Lex Luthor wanted to buy this desert property, then knock off California into the ocean so he could have a bunch of beachfront property. Um, it's, I don't know, I guess real estate ploys, just, they're so, they don't interest They don't interest you. They don't do it for me. They don't. I mean, it's, it's just, there's so many other things that could have been done with that character. Which, by the way, I will say that they do portray him as being very sadistic and evil. I mean, despite the whole real estate... I, I do want, yes, I do want to say that they did a good job making M. Bison a bad guy. Um, 
there's a scene where Gen is telling Chun Li the story because in this movie, Gen used to work with Shadow Law and he was um, a friend of M. Bison and he knows M. Bison's backstory. So he tells Chun Li how uh, M. Bison's parents were missionaries. Was it in Bangkok? Or? Yeah, they were like Irish missionaries. They were Irish missionaries and they died when he was a baby and he survived against all odds because people didn't want to take care of him and then he just became this crook and this thief and he was a really good thief and he would steal from people and eventually it leads up to this scene where he's telling Chun Li about how M. Bison took his newfound bride well I don't know if newfound bride because she was pregnant she was ready to give birth anyway he takes his bride into a cave his wife into this cave to perform this ceremony he lays his wife down and he um, opens up her uh, dr dress in the middle, I guess, or her whatever it was she was yeah, wearing. Right. And he just shoves his hands in her belly, killing her, and tears his baby from her uh, womb. And blood splatters on his face as soon as he jams his hands into her belly. And it was a very interesting uh, scene to show how evil M. Bison is. And apparently it was a... It was something he was doing to put all of his conscience into the his conscience into the baby, so that he would be pure evil, yeah, or all something. His good nature, all or... his good nature, and everything going into the baby, so that he could be completely evil. But for some reason, he still loves his daughter. So I yeah, don't... that was kind of odd. Like maybe it's because she's part of him or something still, because he put that in her. Yeah. So maybe I, I don't know. They don't really go into too much why he kept her alive, but um. He does keep her alive, and it's... It's his one weakness, we yeah. find out at the end. So yeah, I guess maybe part of the ceremony made it so that he does care about her, even though he's pure evil now. But that was one really evil scene. And there's oh, yeah. another one later on. There's a fight in a club when Chun-Li... Um, oh, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, where Chun-Li goes to get information about, um, about what Bison's doing from this woman... I can't even remember her character's name. She's just kind of there, and there's a lot of characters like that. We don't really see her, or I don't think we really see her earlier in the plot until this point in the movie. You see her getting uh, businessmen to sign over like land deeds from the, yeah. the slums, but that's about it. Anyway, this woman is very closely associated with M. Bison, and it, I guess it's inferred that they are lovers, but... She, Chun Li seduces her with a dance at yeah. the club. Not even a good one. Yeah, it, but. yeah, seduces her with a dance to a non-sexy rap song, and then she follows Chun Li to the bathroom. What I can only assume is she was expecting something sexual because she. Uh, gets everybody else out of the bathroom and locks the door behind her when she follows Chun Li in there. Yeah. But then Chun Li attacks her, and there's a fight. Um, and she Chun Li gets the information she wanted anyway. She finds out about the the Bison's waiting for the White Rose at the docks. Yeah, that's... which we find out is his daughter. Yeah, but because she gives this information to Chun Li in the next scene, we see and Bison is. Looks like he's punching a punching bag, but it turns out it's not a punching bag. He has strung this woman up from the ceiling, and he is punching her. Yeah. And he's getting blood on himself from this, and too. he punches her to death. Yes, yeah, she's dead. Yeah, he punches she... her to death. So there's two scenes that really show how evil he is. And I will say they're pretty cruel scenes, and I do, I do have to give the movie a little bit of credit for putting uh, those scenes in to, to really drive home how dark he is. But yeah. Those are about the only ones that are that that dark as far as involving M. Bison. Oh, and going back to the whole club scene, Chun Li executes a guy. Like, oh yeah, flat out. She kills. Him. Like she she's fighting these these henchmen of M. Bison, right? She flips one over and shoots him straight in the was it the throat or well, the upper like chest? Well, like she shot him in the throat. Like, Could I have mean, been the chest. I mean, she flips him over. Pow! Now there's nothing. I mean, <laughs> nothing that says Chun Li's character wouldn't kill somebody. So I, I don't okay, have so a problem like, with her killing just, somebody. But it, she didn't kill anybody else though. Just this one guy. Well, she kills M. Bison at the end. She, well, yeah, she, like, but she didn't kill anybody yeah. else. 
that she but was yeah, fighting. prior prior to that, she hasn't killed anybody. And, but and she, there were other henchmen in this scene she didn't kill. Just this one guy. She yeah, killed. just this one guy. And it, like you never see <coughs> her be afraid to kill people or say killing's wrong or anything like that. But it's just so that is true. This is it, the first time she kills somebody, and there's no there. Like she doesn't. Have, it's never discussed that she has an aversion to killing people. Or no, she, no, but she. We, there should still be some effect on her emotionally that yeah, she killed somebody. Yeah, because it just sort of happens. And there, there, she's a, she had already had a couple of fighting sequences, I think, by this point in the movie. And she just she had already taken care of a few guys in the club, and this particular guy, she flips over and, and shoots him. <laughs> and then she goes about her business. Now, there could have been more fights in this movie, too, I think. Um there's a, a, a long period, it seems, from the fight with Chun-Li's father in the beginning of the movie until the next time we finally see a fight again. And there's a moment for it when she first meets Gin. She doesn't know it's Gin, but she sees a crowd kicking this guy on the ground, and then they walk away and um, in a subway. And she could have gone over and, uh, and broke up the fight and, by fighting herself, yeah. and it would have been an opportunity for it. And I'm not really sure why they just had them walk away and nothing happened. And Anyway, she meets Ken. He's got this spider tattoo. She meets him again. He's sweeping streets in Bangkok. Now, this is after she spends... Uh, yeah, that, that goes back to when you're talking about boring. There seems to be a lot of fluff in the movie. Like you said... Uh, she spends what what did you say five ten minutes at least walking like well there's this five to ten minute sequence of her just like walking the street to lose herself and in Bangkok and in Bangkok and become homeless you know and it's like oh I have to I don't know it but it, it is it was filler and I mean, her being homeless is what leads her to finally uh, meet Gin yeah I guess he actually meets. He comes to her. She realizes Gim was a street sweeper because some woman gives her a scroll that shows that he's the leader of this organization <coughs> of the Order of the Web or whatever. Oh, speaking of scroll, yeah, <coughs> when she gets this scroll, it well, looks the first like, scroll. Yeah, well, the the first scroll that she gets, she d gets after a concert that she plays in. Right, this scroll looks like some sort of relic from the Middle Ages, and. <laughs> She, her, her co-star or whatever. She's like, oh, I almost forgot. Somebody delivered a, uh, this scroll for you, and, I, and it's like someone delivered. Like she acted like it was yeah, nothing. It, it was, was a very odd thing to just deliver to somebody. It was like FedEx come and give you that or something. I mean, but yeah. You would think that her friend would have said, "This is really strange that this got <laughs> yes. delivered," but the line just didn't. yeah, just the line just keeps carrying, you know. Yeah. But um, I would say, I would say the thing that makes this a poor movie would be going back to what you said. It was there's nothing in it that really is good. It's just boring. It's just it's it's a like a cookie cutter plot. Fighting sequences aren't necessarily done great. Um, acting. Now another thing, there's two or three stories that it keeps jumping between yeah. throughout the movie. We got Chun Li trying to find her father. Then we've got this other character, um, trying, Maya. We've got Maya who is she CIA or Interpol or something. She's something not like Interpol, that. I don't think. But Nash is Interpol. Oh, okay. Um, or maybe I don't know what organization she works for. I'd probably turn my brain off whenever <laughs> that was explained. But there's the storyline with Maya and Charlie Nash. And that is a uh, another main storyline. Yeah, they sort of jump back and forth. And that. then in Bison's master plan, yeah, with Bangkok. And so that all jumps around. There's there was a scene where M. Bison has Vega kill all of the uh, the men. I didn't talk about that. Oh yeah, and Bison some... kills all the other businessmen that own that area or whatever. Yeah, and cuts all their heads off and puts them on dinner plates around a table inside a container. Um, one of those big metal like shipping eight, containers. Yeah, like 18 wheeler type thing. And uh, it was another scene that shows in Bison's how evil he is. But 
So, I mean, there, there's a lot to, to hate on this movie. <laughs> One thing about that scene in particular, though, is that we just see M. Bison sitting at a table while all these men are being killed when they could have shown us Vega going to kill these men and actually yeah. shown us some of that scene and, you know, yeah. show don't tell, you know, showing yeah. not telling would have been better than just, we know what happened, we can hear stuff going on, but we don't actually get to see it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of... Could have been better. Yeah. Um, could have been implemented better. Like, that's the thing, it's just, so many things just could have been done better, and, like, I, it would have been different if this was just really bad, then you could just constantly make fun of it, or if it was really good, which you, you know... Two extremes sometimes work, but when when you get something right in the middle like that, it's just so forgettable. Like this, I mean, this isn't a so bad it's good movie. No, no, it's really it's, not. It's not not that kind of film. I will say, like moving on to some of the stuff that if I if I had to pick something that I liked about this movie, Chris Klein. Does he look anything like Charlie Nash? No, he doesn't. No, I was doesn't. waiting for you to talk about Chris Klein. Chris Klein is the glimmering bit of corn in this heaping pile of dog turds, you know. Like, he... He delivers such a hammy performance. I want to say... Like, I can't even call it phoning in because he tries to act bad. Like, I have this theory that he made a bet with some of his friends that uh, he could probably get fired during production if he just acted really, really bad. So he keeps trying to one-up himself and acting bad, and nobody ever says anything. The director keeps letting him roll, because he gets... He goes crazy with some of his... Stuff, like, everything from his mannerisms, the way he talks. It's just... It's crazy. Like, I, I do think... I think the Bison performance is good in this movie. He does a good job. Um, that's an actor who takes his role seriously, even though he's in a, a, a suck fest of a movie, and he knows he's in a lemon of a movie. Um... But he gets paid to act, so he acts. And I, I wouldn't even say Kristen Kruick's performance is bad. Her performance is fine. No, no, I mean it's. And and um, Gin, who I cannot remember the actor's name right now, <laughs> Liu Kang but, from. Uh... But who played Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat? <laughs> he, he performs fine. Yeah, I mean he. But, um, and I do want to give the thinking about Liu Kang. Uh, Luke Kang about Gen. <laughs> he trains Chun Li in this movie at, at one point, and they actually do use a fireball in this film at least. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that, that is. I'll yeah. give the movie credit for at least doing an energy attack because the other Street Fighter movie never did that. No, no. But um, it's not so much that the actors are bad. I guess the direction was bad in this film, and the script itself is bad. Yeah. And those are probably the two things that bring it down. But uh, Chris Klein is like, he knows he's in a bad movie and he's just running with it. Like, I really think that he he just thought to himself, like, how far can I push this before the director says, hey, listen, you, you might want to <laughs> dial this back. But like, I could just picture him going back to his trailer and sitting down and be like, all right, I'm definitely going to get fired today. And like, <laughs> nobody comes to his trailer to tell him he's been let go. Yeah. But uh, it, it's just the way he talks. Like, you first see him, he's like, like oh, what's your name? And he's like, call me Nash. Or, you know, he has, like, his head bobble, you know, and, like, just the way he talks. And, like, he sees, uh, what's her name that he's working with? Um, Maya. Maya. And, like, she's walking away, and he's staring at her. He's like, ooh, I love my job. And I'm like, it's so animated and comical. I'm like, <laughs> and, and I know Chris Klein can act. I mean, I've seen him. I mean, he might... You know, you can debate whether how good of an actor he is, but he can act. I mean, he's I've seen passable performances from him. He's not a, what I would label a bad actor, but but he was trying to act bad there. I mean, that was... <laughs> but it's definitely, it's a movie that, like other movies that are based on existing properties, doesn't really... Uh, tries to do its own thing and and I do want to say I don't I don't think I talked about this yet this movie continuity wise would take place even before the first Street Fighter tournament which means it would be before Chun-Li 
uh, was ever involved in any of the tournaments. In the video games, Chun Li doesn't appear till Street Fighter II, uh, and even the Street Fighter Alpha games, which is a younger version of Chun Li before Street Fighter II, they take place between Street Fighter One and Two. So this movie would take place even before Street Fighter One, um, which means, and they do mention Ryu at the end of the movie. Although Gen calls him Ryu, which bothers me because at the time this... When was this made? <laughs> 2009? 2009, I think. Yeah. But yeah, 2009. When this was made, people know how to properly pronounce the name Ryu now. When I went to the arcades to play Street Fighter II as a kid, nobody knew how to say it right. And it was forgivable then. But uh, even in the Street Fighter movie... I think Raul Julia says it correctly. He does. Raul, Raul Julia Raul says Julia, the name Ryu Julia correctly in the Street Fighter movie. But no, nobody else in that movie. Nobody else in that movie does. Says it, but but I, Raul Julia does. He's a he was a constant professional, and uh, something tells me he did his homework and learned how to pronounce every name. But I learned when the, I first saw the Street Fighter uh, anime movie is when I first uh, learned how to say his name properly, and then I felt like an idiot for saying it wrong all those years, but everybody else did, so it didn't matter. But in 2009, there's no excuse for him to say Ryu yeah. instead of Ryu at the end of that movie. But it basically alluded to, again, was going to the Street Fighter tournament, and Chun-Li decides not to go with him. Yeah. So it, te it technically uh, follows it as far as going up to the first tournament, but... Um, Chun-Li's father wouldn't have died yet, I don't think, story-wise. Not, not in front of her face. Yeah, and not, he next wouldn't have died in front of her. Uh, in the games, Chun-Li becomes a detective, I think, when she's 18, and she, then she joins Interpol later on. So we don't have any detective Chun-Li or anything like that. There's there is an Interpol connection. With there's Nash, homeless Chun-Li. Yeah, there's homeless Chun-Li. <laughs> she's a pianist. She's a concert pianist in this. Um, before she goes after her father. <clears throat> now they do explain that she does have a white mom in this movie, so Kristen Kruick works as, as far as the fact that, you know... They at least try to explain why uh, she's not, why completely, she's not a completely Asian. Complete, like, yeah, so, so why mean, she's not completely Chinese, so that makes sense. But. I mean, I applaud the effort, <laughs> but um, yeah. But yeah, this would take place before any of the games, so they could do anything they wanted, pretty much. But there are still things that, adaptation-wise, are wrong. But it doesn't it doesn't have to follow the games perfectly. The main problems are it wasn't it was slow. It yeah. It uh, drags. It is boring in a lot of places. The direction and writing of the script really are probably the worst parts. The, the actors, some of them give serviceable performances. Yeah, yeah. Some of them don't, but it's not because they're a bad actor. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> that's really all I have to say. Yeah, uh, that's... Is there anything else you want to talk about about no, this No, no, I think we covered it all. Uh, which brings us to our next part. Um, we got to rate it, and... Would you recommend it? So, on a on a scale of one to five stars, what would you give it? I don't want to say one, just because that's 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 really low. It's not yeah. the worst movie I've ever seen. I'll say two stars. That's what I was gonna go with. <coughs> I was gonna say two stars. I wouldn't recommend this movie unless you're curious or you're um, a really big. If you're a huge Street Fighter fan and you, well, if you're a huge Street Fighter fan, you may not want to watch it. Well, yeah. But if you're curious, about, but if that makes you curious about it, I don't think it would make you mad. But you might be curious about about what they did. Uh, we did. I do want to say we watched the unrated cut. So I don't know how much. I don't know how many more scenes were in that. I don't know what was different between the theatrical cut and the unrated. That may be a reason it seemed to dr seem boring. I'm going to guess that's probably not the reason it seemed boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's... Mm. I think... And what about your rating? And if yeah, like I said, it? I would give it two stars as well. Um, 
I would not recommend this generally. I do think if you're a fan of like awesomely bad movies and awesomely bad performances, I think it's worth checking out just to see Chris Klein. That's my personal opinion. Um, he's the only to me. He was the only entertaining aspect about this movie. That's true. Like he made me laugh anytime he was on screen, no matter what he said. Um, I would say, but I, I wouldn't want somebody to go out and just spend money on this. Yeah, don't. Um, if you find it on net, like if Netflix were to ever put it up, I would I would suggest to watch. Or if you have a friend that might have it, let you borrow it or something. But in general, I wouldn't invest a lot of money or any money in this movie. I was able to buy this cheap when I bought it. I hadn't seen it yet at the time, <laughs> and it's not that I regret my decision. I'm just like I mean. I just bought it because I buy movies sometimes that I'm interested in seeing if I can get them really cheap. So if you can find this for $5 and you're really that curious, but if you can watch it some other way and not have to, to spend any <laughs> money, <laughs> like if they put it on Netflix or something, it'd be better to check it out that way. Yeah, or if you can find it on the internet or whatever. Like, I, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, that's that pretty much wraps it up, our review. Um this might be a little rough, but this is our first episode. This is our, our first time doing this, uh, so we will continue to do this in the future. We will review more movies. Um, we're not just going to review movies like this that we know are bad. We'll be reviewing movies uh, from all over the spectrum of oh, good yeah. and bad. Yeah, good, bad, the uh, ugly, anything in between from stellar hits to just, you know, really, really, really bad movies. With, with movies like this, too, mm-hmm. for, for me personally... If it's an adaptation, I have to score it based on that as well if I'm familiar with the source material just because it does bother me watching. If I'm, I've watched a movie on a, based on a book and they change too much stuff, it does bother me even though sometimes I can still enjoy the movie. But yeah, our, Hopefully our subsequent reviews will, as we hone our craft, get better and better and better. Um, but, but yeah, that's this is a, a very the inaugural episode of uh, part time, and uh, like I said, it hopefully it'll get better. Our setup will get better, you know, it, it, as we stream. Anyway, on. we will evolve this. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ryan. I'm Judd. And uh, this has been a part time review of Street, Street Fighter, Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li.